Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Glossy Philosophy. My name is Jansen Bidman. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and give this video a thumbs up because today we are doing a really fun Italian film Sophia Loren inspired makeup tutorial so stay tuned. I've already washed my face and done my skincare so let's get started but before we do let's talk about Sophia Loren's skincare. So it is rumored that she would use a little bit of olive oil as part of her skincare regimen and I've actually been using that for the past month and a half to take off my makeup and it's worked really really well. So if you run out of your makeup cleaner or your oil or something olive oil is working really well at least for myself i do go in with an additional cleanser afterwards but i just wanted to share that because sometimes we run out of our products and sometimes it's nice to have something that isn't quite so expensive that will just take off that makeup initially give a little bit of hydration and then we can go in with our regular cleanser and just cleanse the skin so now we are ready to get into the tutorial First, we are going to neutralize the face. This is a heavy eye makeup look because the 60s were all about makeup. They loved makeup a lot. So we definitely need to make sure that our palette, our skin is really nice and neutralized. Now we're gonna go in with some corrector and just very lightly tap that underneath the eye and anywhere where we're seeing a little bit of discoloration always remembering to be very gentle. Sometimes I feel like the closer I get to hitting pan on the Bobbi Brown, the more I need a brush just to help kind of balance out what I'm putting on the skin. So don't feel funny if one day you just feel like, wow, I put on way too much or I'm just not getting enough. Grab a brush and put a little bit on and then blend out with your finger. That's a great way to go. I also feel, depending on, again, how much sleep, what I'm eating, caffeine intake, all of that, sometimes I do need just a little bit extra corrector. So that's when I'll go back in with a really fluffy brush and just kind of go along that extra little dip that I personally have and maybe you have too. But using something really, really fluffy, remember the fluffier your brush, the less product you're putting on the skin. The denser your brush, the more product you're putting on the skin. I always like a fluffier brush around the eye area because I don't want to gunk it up because our eye area moves the most throughout the day than any other part of our face. So I'd never like to put a ton of product on there. I'm not gonna go in with my concealer just yet because I know I'm gonna use that to kind of emphasize what else is going on. But I am gonna go in with complexion because I'm using the Cinnabar palette and I know that I'm not gonna have a ton of fall, if any at all. So now we'll go in with Seamless Skin Foundation. And just as always, I'm just very quickly going to bounce my brush and blend that out. This is going to be a little bit more of a wearable Sophia Loren look. It's definitely going to be, you know, kind of a smoky cat eye, if you will, which was very popular not only in the 60s, but also right when Charlotte Tilbury hit the scene, right? She was all about that smoky cat eye, definitely the cat flick, the kitten flick. And now Lisa Eldridge has just come out with a kitten flick liner. So the 60s are kind of always around in beauty and it's because it it's just a beautiful way of doing eyeshadow. We still use a lot of the same techniques. So even if you don't want to go full Sophia Loren or full Audrey Hepburn or you know cut crease, things like that, just kind of having these tools in your back pocket for knowing how to go the full extent can be very helpful. And you can always tone it down for whatever life may throw at you. But it's a fun one for an occasion. It's a fun one for a Tuesday. It's just, it's just fun. 60s makeup is really, really fun. It's all about elongating the eye and really playing up that cat part of a female's face. So now I'm gonna do my brows because I wanna make sure that my brows will support whatever I'm putting on to my eyes, but I also wanna make sure that I don't go too crazy. I'm not gonna fill in a ton, I'm just gonna fill in whatever needs to be filled in. So we wanna keep it a little bit more on the natural side, not natural natural, but not, this isn't the star of the show. 
It's not the skin, it's not the brows, it's the eyes. And we can always go back in, but at least we have a good canvas starting off point. Don't forget to come through just really lightly in the same direction that your brow hair is actually growing, and that will give you a really nice finish and kind of pull any any part where you maybe overdid it. You can really, really play with that product before it kind of sets on the skin, which is great. So before I powder, before we kind of go into it, we're just gonna jump right into the eyes. So I'm gonna use Lisa Eldridge's Cinnabar palette. We are absolutely gonna be playing with these more matte or velvet shades. And I don't think we'll be adding in any sparkle because that doesn't really seem to fit with the brief, if you will. So I'm gonna take my 201 into that lightest brown shade in the Cinnabar palette. And I'm gonna place that all over the eye. I just want the other shadows to have something to cling on to. So I am gonna sweep it up into the socket. And because my brush is really fluffy, it is going to disperse it a little bit above as well. But I am also wanting to get that onto the lid because when I'm working with darker colors, I want them to have something to grip onto that isn't just my eyeshadow primer. So again, just really lightly, just kind of defining the eye, getting that shape. Everybody's shape is just slightly different. Just bring your brush up until it kind of like sinks in in between the bone and where your eyeball is and that's your socket. It sounds really crazy just hearing it, but it totally works. Okay, now we're gonna go in with the 217 and I'm gonna go into that medium shade and I'm just gonna start to build that up on the lid because Sophia's look is pretty smoky, but for my eye shape, I wanna make sure that it makes sense for me as well. So I'm gonna to try to keep this on the lid and just in that socket. If I need to switch into a smaller brush so I don't get too high, then that's totally fine. But right now we're just laying down that product And just really softly blending. You can see how amazing these shadows are and how soft and malleable they are. They're just kind of a dream. And then if I did get anything above the socket line, then I'm just going to blend that out, kind of blow it out a little bit. Just a little bit because we do want to grab onto that almond shape. And as you notice, I'm going all the way to that line that I would if I was doing a kitten flick, which I probably will. So you wanna go all the way, follow the contours of your face, of your eye, and bring it out just a little bit further and that will really help to build kind of that cat eye. It's a little bit further than we bring out our eyeshadow nowadays, but it works a treat when you're doing 60s makeup. So I'm gonna build that up even more. So now I'm gonna go in with the 203 back into that medium shade. I'm gonna layer that up a little bit. Just on the outsides of the eye, I'm gonna go back into my 217. There's nothing on here, nothing extra. Just softly blend out those edges. And then we're gonna go in with a pencil brush into the darkest shade and really go for it. And we will also be going in with a liquid liner too. Pulling on the top edge of that to bring that up and kind of smoke that out just a little bit. So we're definitely starting to build up that cat eye. So I'm gonna give my eye a break a little bit and I'm gonna tight line my eyes with the Victoria Beckham. And then I'm gonna go in with my Stila and start drawing in that that cat eye and then really emphasize it again with that dark shade in the Cinnabar palette. So we have our shape, a little bit more of our shape, and now we're just gonna emphasize that with that darkest color. Actually, I'm gonna mix the darkest color and that really rich brown on my pencil brush and really emphasize 
that cat eye. And it just creates this really beautiful richness right around the outside of the eye and also right next to the lid. Going back in with my 217 with nothing on it, nothing extra, and just softening that a little bit. I don't want to lose that definition, but I also don't want any harsh lines because we're not doing a cut crease. Now we need to bring a little bit of that onto the bottom. So back in with your pencil brush, dipping into both of those darker shades and doing a very thin line right along the lash line. If you need to, you can always take a Q-tip and just clean up a little bit or you can also use a Q-tip to soften. It's kind of like an unsung hero in the tools category. So now I'm going to leave my eyes alone for just a moment. I'm going to go in with concealer. I'm just taking the luminous silk and instead of going directly onto my face, I'm going to split it between my ring finger and just gently tap that in. Now I have quite a bit here, so I'm going to do kind of that fan or that triangle of light under my eyes. And look, that just really helps to lift. If I have anything left, I'm going to bring it down the center of my nose and just a little bit on my chin. So now I know that I need some kind of a brush because my fingers are too saturated. So I'm going to go back in with my brush and just make sure that everything is nice and soft, nice and blended, and everything makes sense. But you can see just a little bit kind of slims down your nose. It's, it's magic. Now we are ready to finish off the look. So we need mascara, we need powder, we need definitely bronzer because Sophia Loren was very bronzed usually. I'm going to keep giving my eyes just a little bit of time and I'm going to go in with the 108 brush into my hourglass powder and lightly go anywhere where I put that concealer just to make sure that that is set really nicely and so I don't have any shine in case I'm going on movie set. I'm going to put on my bronzer first and then we're going to do kind of a Sophia Loren trick and also a trick that Lisa Eldridge has been talking about lately and I've been doing on my channel too, which is taking your lipstick and using it as a blush. And actually I think Grace Kelly would do that too. There's a lot of movie stars that would do that because then you know that your lips and your cheeks always match and that just makes for a very harmonious makeup look. We're gonna go in with Je ne sais quoi and I'm actually gonna go in with my finger because her lips are either a really nice nude or they have a little bit of that kind of peachy tint to them. And a little bit of Muse gloss. So then you can either go straight on with the bullet or you can always use your finger. I like to place with one finger and then start to blend out with two. And if I need to, I can always go back in with my foundation brush if I grabbed too much product. And that just blends everything in and gives you the best blush. So just right on that bone and just going in big ovals until you don't have any edges or until you blended it out as much as you want to. It also gives you a really nice, just kind of highlighted cheek as well. So it's not going to last a super, super long time, but if you want it to last a little bit longer, go back in and just really, really lightly tap on some kind of a translucent powder. You'll take down a little bit of that glow, but it will last a little bit longer. So now the only other thing we have left to do are our lashes. We can either use false lashes if we're going full Sophie Loren, or we can do something like this Tarte Mascara that has fibers in there, which will almost mimic a false lash. So getting right into the roots and pulling up, making sure that I'm spinning my wand 
as I pull and that gives me the best look with this mascara. I always like to have my mirror below me too. So if I'm doing my makeup in the morning in front of the mirror, then it just helps if I tip my head back a little bit because then I don't feel like I'm gonna poke myself in the eye. Which is why when makeup artists do your makeup, we're always telling you to tip back when we do your mascara. So it's the same thing. It doesn't feel like we're coming after you. And then just tapping really gently on that lower lash line. And that is the finished look. Thank you guys so much for watching this Sophia Loren Italian film inspired makeup. I think it's really fun to just try out new looks and kind of go back in history and see what they were doing because a lot of those techniques we're still using today. This would be great for an event. This would be great for a date. This would just be great because you're feeling a little sassy. I do fashion videos every Wednesday. I do beauty videos every Friday. Make sure you go back and watch Under the Tuscan Sun book talk, which inspired this makeup tutorial. And make sure you're also watching the shorts and following me on Instagram for tips and tricks to make your life a little bit easier and a little bit more glossy. And I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.